So when I tell you guys that you changed procedure at one of the largest outdoor power equipment companies in the entire world, I'm not lying. And it's sort of crazy. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Jacanic. Hope everybody's having a great week. Are y'all ready to check out this year's 2023 Equipment Expo? Let's do this. So day one of the show, I was super awestruck at all of these beautiful booths of outdoor power equipment. I had not planned on going, but when Husvarda invited me to come and meet the heads of all of their product development teams, and on top of that, a chance to get to meet you, there was no way I was gonna pass this up. And boy, guys, did you show up. Man, it was so nice. Husqvarna gave me about 100 hats to sign for all of y'all. And I have got to take a moment to express my heartfelt appreciation for each and every single one of you that came out during this meet and greet at Husqvarna's showcase booth. I am so incredibly humbled and grateful for the support that you showed me that day. Meeting you in person, getting to see your faces, hearing your stories about how I've saved you time, money, and frustration. I cannot thank you all enough for being there and I cannot wait to continue sharing this crazy journey with you. But you know what I want to do? I want to get outside and try some of these chainsaws. All right, we're out here at the Husqvarna booth and I have not seen one of these saws in my shop yet. Check out this bad boy. Say hello to my little friend, the Husqvarna 3120 XP. This thing is 119 cc's of power and it runs for about $2,000. So this is auto tune 3.0, so when it fires, you're gonna go straight from here to the top. Got it. There's no choke. Oh yeah, there's that's the start one. position. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can pull it without I don't know. Oh, oh. <laughs> I hear <didn't think>. it. <laughs> it's so easy. As you know, I am not an advocate for no battery powered outdoor power products, but I do have to admit there is a time and a place for everything. And I really appreciate getting the chance to run these chainsaws. 
because I don't get them in the shop. I don't repair battery powered equipment. Everything is removed and replaced. And to be able to feel the power, to know its durability, to feel how smooth it runs and still be able to see it make a good cut, is pretty impressive. And I want to give a huge thanks to Rick for giving me a tour of all the Husqvarna chainsaws. He is my new go-to guru for all things Husqvarna chainsaw related. Thanks a bunch. The biggest thanks to this guy right here. This is Jack. And Jack is the entire reason that Husqvarna invited me to hang out at their booth because Jack watches my videos and he suggested Chicanic to come. And I cannot thank you enough. You my boy, Blue. Thank you so much, Jack. Now, while I'm here at the show, I'm not going to promote a bunch of people because I don't use their stuff and I don't know about it. But what I do know about is Mojack. Mojack has one of the leading brands in uh, mower lifts. I have three of them myself and they work really well. So as you can see here, I can stand behind Mojack because it's quality at affordable prices and it'll help you out whenever you need to get your mower up in the air. This place just goes on forever and ever with the most awesome outdoor power products you could ever think of. Another one I highly recommend only because they're super easy to work on, they're super durable, and they barely ever break down is Skag. Check these out. We got the Skag Patriot. Now this thing is a 52 inch deck. It comes with a 23 and a half horsepower Kohler Command Pro. That's a beast of an engine. Gotta love these names. We got the Skag Freedom Z. This comes with a Kohler. I think it is a 26 horsepower Kohler engine. This looks like another 52 inch deck. Yes, it is. Then there's one I run into and I'm not so happy with. Now we gotta love the name. It's Liberty Z. We got a 48 inch, but what they do here, powered by Skag Power Equipment, what does that mean? It's some Chinese engine. They've started doing the same thing with some of the Toro Zero turns. They're Toro engines and they're just Chinese engines. Always gotta love a Kubota, right? Gotta love the Kubota. Gotta love Kubota. X marks, gotta love the X marks. There is not enough hours in the day to look at everything I wanna see. So editing brew here because I did not have time while I was at the expo to sit down and make a video explaining what I discussed with the vice president of Husqvarna and the heads of all the product development teams. Um, yeah. It was a little insane, but they were super nice and it was a little overwhelming. For example, I sat down with the head of development for the residential writer section and the guy made me feel like he was gonna change the designs like that. Like I mentioned, hey, my guys might wanna see a Zerg fitting so they can grease their spindles. He's like, would you like us to do that? And I was thinking, oh my gosh, if I say yes, are you going to do that? It was a little crazy. But really, I've never felt so listened to by anybody. They truly wanted my feedback from the feedback that I get from y'all so they can improve on their products. So then I sit down with the vice president and he was extremely informative. Of course, my first question is, what happened with parts this year? And he said in March, March, the beginning of spring, the busiest time of the year, they decided to implement a new parts pulling automated system and it was a flop. He said he didn't realize how big of a flop it was until he saw my video and read y'all's comments and realized they've got to make some changes. I didn't even have to ask him the next question. Of course, pricing. If y'all saw my video about some of their prices, you know I compared them to some of the other leading manufacturers and they were a little extreme on some things. So what did he do? He formed a dedicated team to examine all of their pricing strategy and make sure they're on par with all the other comparable brands. Wow. Now who did this? You guys did this. Now you could say I did it, I helped, I made the video, but if you guys didn't watch, like, subscribe, and keep pushing my videos, nobody would see them and this would have gone nowhere. You guys are the reason that one of the largest manufacturers of outdoor power equipment in the world has changed strategy and procedure. Let's keep doing it guys. Now, of course, this did just happen in the past couple months, so I'm not gonna expect too many changes yet because as of today that, you know, 
four gasket kit is still going for $60 at Husqvarna. So I want you guys to know, and I want them to know too, I'm going to keep an eye on them and y'all will be the first to know. And I know the burning question on everybody's mind, did Husqvarna pay you anything for being there or try to make you push their products? Absolutely not. They were extremely nice. They never made any insinuation like that at all. But you know what? They did give me some stuff. Check this out. A Chicanic cutting board with the original Husqvarna logo on it. And I don't know if many of you know what that is. That's actually a gun sight. I had no idea. That's because they made guns a long time ago. But check this out. How cool is that? They have a guy that makes these. That's beautiful. That is like the coolest gift ever. And I'm not gonna lie, they did give me one more thing. And oh, the irony. I mean, I did make a video about their recall on these, but they gave me a remote controlled toy automated mower. It's actually really cute. And my granddaughter's gonna love it. So yeah, guys, still not brand bought. Although I did spend a long time in the Husqvarna showcase booth. So let me show you some of their mowers. Let's get back to the show. Now I have to stop at this mower because when I see quality, I'm gonna let y'all know about it. You have got to check this thing out. Now Husqvarna's got this new, I think it's a 60 inch commercial uh, ZTR Z560XS. Let's check it out. First off, let's talk about the spindle on this bad thing. It is like, feels like it's 20 pounds, pure cast iron. It's got a 10 inch width on it. I mean, I love this design because it's never gonna break on you. It's got an inch and an eighth shaft. It's got a tapered roller bearing inside. I mean, this thing is built to last forever. Now, first thing we really wanna care about is this deck here. It's got seven gauge steel. It's a six inch deep deck with the front having a bevel on the front of it. So you don't have to have any rollers. It does a perfect cut, smooth every single time. Look at this huge hole to throw the grass out. That's pretty sweet. One of the coolest things about this though is the tires. Now, they look like regular tires, but when you see the inside of them here, they've got this super sticky, I don't even know what to call it. I, I guess I should have asked, but these, if you poke anything through, a nail, anything like this, from whatever this stuff is inside, it's not gonna go flat. I mean, that's amazing. Now, while I was looking over this, I had a commercial landscaper walk up to me and he did say he owns one and there was a couple things he was worried about. One thing he did say is that you want to keep it inside because all of these shiny parts right here, he didn't think were very good when it comes to the weather, that they will rust out on you within a year. So that's just something to think about. But then again, when you pay this much money for such a nice piece of machinery, you're gonna wanna take care of it. And one of the coolest things is, is the accessibility. You have to change out your belt, and look at your pulleys. Look at how huge those pulleys are. When it comes to pulleys, the bigger, the better. You, that way it's got less turning as the belt's going around. The idler pulley right here is really easy to get to. This is usually where the belt jumps off, but they've got this huge, huge belt guard here, so you won't have any issues with that. This bad boy comes with a FX1000V Kawasaki twin cylinder on it. These are actually fuel injected, so you don't have to worry about carburation problems. Even if you get a little water in your gas, you're not gonna have to worry about that. So I can't say one thing, who's going is doing this right? Let's check out the homeowner riders. This thing is pretty sweet. We got a 54 inch welded deck. We've got rollers all around. That looks like a great design for the deck hangers. Belt guards look like they're really easy to remove whenever you need to get to your belt and pulley. We got this huge bumper on the front. Check out this chute. That thing is huge. They really worked on making larger areas for the grass to come out. The seat looks ridiculously comfy. It's got armrests and it is powered by a 24 horsepower twin cylinder Kawasaki. Sweet. Not looking for something so big. We got a 22 horsepower with a Kohler. This is the 46 inch cut. It is a stamp deck, but look at all this extra support that they put around the entire edge here. And it comes with their upgraded aluminum housing, four bolt spindle. That's the one that we had talked about, how they replaced the bottom bearing and made it an open bearing instead of a sealed bearing. That way that thing can actually get some grease in it. They packed it with a ton of grease. I think the aluminum is made out of a better material and it's still for the low price of like 47 bucks. And just in case you didn't know, Red Max is made by Husqvarna. Now 
Now the one thing that I really love about the Red Max trimmers is how light they are. Just like the Mariamis, they're pretty light too and they're pretty good trimmers, but unfortunately the Mariamis don't have any adjustments on the carburetors and the Red Max do and that's a big plus in my world. Like check out this backpack blower here. It looks like it has no adjustments. That's because the government's really made them hide them. There's one here and there's a plug in there that you gotta get out and there is a special tool to get it out, but there's also one coming straight down in the center into the throttle, so. It still has a high and a low adjustment. at the show is they are pushing battery powered equipment like crazy and unfortunately what we find is everybody we speak to we say well what happens whenever something breaks on it every single one of them says you throw away the part and replace there is no fixing any of this stuff anymore Everything's electric. It's completely battery powered? Or? That is, yeah. Wow. Some other outdoor power products here. Got some of gas powered stuff over there. Another one that we are a fan of is the Dixie Choppers. They make good quality stuff. This definitely looks like it's gonna be the future of tires, which is crazy to me, no air. I mean, but these things feel like they're really made to last forever. We'll see what happens. Give it a few years. So guys, this wraps up the 2023 Equipment Expo. I had a fantastic time. I'm so glad that y'all came out and was able to see me. That was amazing. It was so nice to meet each and every single one of you. Huge thanks to Husqvarna for letting me, you know, sit at their showcase booth and meet all y'all. That was awesome. But hang around guys for my final thoughts. So guys, I just want to wrap this up with this entire experience has been extremely surreal to me. Um, to me, I'm just a chick who fixes things in front of my phone, either in my garage or in my shop, trying to save everybody a little time, money, and frustration, and never in a million years imagined the impact that we together can make. So I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing, bringing you the truth, and y'all are gonna keep commenting and spreading the word too, because obviously, together, we can make a difference. So thanks again for tuning in to Jacanic. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash Jacanic. Find me at Instagram at Thrill Jacanic or find me at Jacanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys and have a great day. Mm -hmm.